Hey everybody, today I'll be comparing two professional grade half inch torque wrenches, the QD3R250A from Snap-on and the TW12250 from Icon which is sold at Harbor Freight. If you haven't yet heard of Icon, basically this is the brand new lineup of premium quality tools that Harbor Freight recently released, specifically aimed at competing with the big truck brands at a much lower price point. I got the idea for this video because in their own advertising they're claiming this Icon Torque Wrench beats the Snap-on version, so I went out and bought both of them to see for myself. I paid over 400 bucks for the Snap-on direct off their website. And I paid about 100 bucks for the Icon in the store at Harbor Freight. Now before I get started, I'd like you to pause this video and leave a comment below with your guess as to not only which one's going to be more accurate, but also which one do you think is going to be a better deal. After the video is over, leave a reply to your comment and let me know if you were right or if your opinion has now been changed. Here's a closer look at both torque wrenches side by side and right off the bat you'll notice that the snap-on is slightly longer. It's coming in at 24 and a quarter inches long versus 23 and 9 sixteenths with the icon, meaning that the snap-on is about three quarters of an inch longer and you would have to apply slightly less force in order to achieve the exact same torque spec using it. Remember when using a precision tool like one of these, you should never use it to break a nut or bolt free since it may throw off the calibration. And instead, you should only use a standard tool such as a ratchet or a breaker bar, which won't damage anything. The on and off switch will be used depending on the threads of the fastener. On or clockwise is used when tightening a normal right hand threaded bolt. Off or counterclockwise is used when tightening a reverse or left hand threaded bolt. Adjusting the torque is easy with either one of them. They each have a working torque range from 50 foot-pounds to 250 foot-pounds, and you'll set the desired torque by rotating the grip. With the snap-on, this is done by pushing the locking ring up as you spin the handle, releasing it to lock it in place. With the icon, you need to pull that locking ring down as you spin the handle, and you would also release it to lock it in place. Both of them increase in one foot-pound increments, and in one full turn, the torque is increased by a full 10 foot-pounds. One thing to point out here, which may or may not be a big deal to you, are the markings on the handle. The snap-on has laser etched markings on the handle, and then engraved markings on the body. The icon has engraved markings on both the handle as well as the body. Normally, torque wrenches are not a, quote, high wear tool, so most likely the laser etching won't rub off, but it is worth noting depending on your personal preference. There are two tests with any torque wrench that are needed in order to gauge the overall quality and usefulness, the first of those being accuracy across the entire usable range. Here's a Proto Torque Wrench Tester, which is identical to the ones that many calibration facilities use. It measures the torque extremely accurately that's being applied, and it shows an exact amount to the tenth of a foot-pound. I have it set to first peak mode, and that's what's being applied when you hear the click with a torque wrench. The accuracy variance has been set at 4% for clockwise rotation based on an identical spec rating from each manufacturer, meaning that if, for example, 100 foot-pounds is set, anything between 96 foot-pounds and 104 foot-pounds would be within range. You'll see a green light light up if it is within range and a red light if it's not. Starting out at 50 foot-pounds in a clockwise rotation, I'll test both the Snap-on and Icon back-to-back, -back, moving up to 100, 150, 200, and finally 250 foot-pounds, alternating them back and forth between each test. Now that we're done with clockwise, we're going to switch back to counterclockwise mode. I need to bump the tolerance from 4% up to 6% in line with the manufacturer ratings, and we're gonna start at the 250 foot-pound mark and work our way backwards, going to 200, 150, 100, and finally 50 foot-pounds. On the final test, unfortunately, the snap-on was out of range, which is why you see the red light blinking. The icon was within range in all 10 tests in both clockwise and counterclockwise rotations. Now here's the surprising part. Out of those 10 tests, they tied in one, the Snap-on won one test with one failure out of range, and the Icon won eight tests with none of them out of range. In both clockwise and counterclockwise rotations across the full range from 50 to 250 foot-pounds, the Icon is more accurate. 
The second thing you need to consider is repeatability, meaning if you're torquing head bolts, for example, all those bolts need to be the exact same when you're done in order to have equal clamping pressure. For this test, I'm gonna use a random number generator to pick a number between 50 and 250, and the generator came up with 74. I'm gonna set the test unit at 74 foot-pounds as well as both torque wrenches to that spec, and I'm gonna repeat the test 10 times with each unit to see which one is more accurate as far as a repeatability test. With both torque wrenches, they were within spec with all 10 tests, which is a really good thing. However, the variance which we see is a bit concerning. The Icon kept a very tight group. Every reading was between 75.3 and 76 foot-pounds, and that means we had a max of 0.7 foot-pounds variance. The snap-on, however, was a little bit more broad. Its group ranged from 73.4 to 75.8 foot-pounds with a max variance of 2.4 foot-pounds. If you're wanting better repeatability, at least in this range, the Icon is once again the clear winner. They each feature a sealed head design in order to keep the profile as thin as possible while preventing dust, dirt, and debris from inadvertently getting inside the mechanism. I went ahead and opened up the heads of both of them to show you what's inside. A couple of Torx bolts and the plates pop right off, and we can see everything is pre-lubed from the factory on both units. The Icon has a single pawl design with a 90 tooth gear. The Snap-on has a dual pawl design with an 80 tooth gear. These give you an extremely low swing arc, with the Snap-on being only four and a half degrees of rotation needed to engage the next tooth, and the Icon is coming in at even less with a four degree rotation. Lastly would be the blow mold cases. Each torque wrench includes one, but keep in mind that the Snap-on does have a smaller and more sleek design. If you are hard pressed for toolbox space, that may be something to consider. It's using plastic latches, and the larger Icon case is using metal hinges. But if you absolutely want that smaller case, I did find it on Snap-on's website for about 30 bucks shipped, and you can pick one of these up for your Icon torque wrench if you ended up getting one, because it does fit inside with no problem. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check that out for yourself. Now this makes me kind of wonder, why did I pay over 400 bucks for the Snap-on with only a one year warranty, when the Icon only costs about 100 bucks and has a lifetime warranty out the door? Now I'd like to know what you think of these two torque wrenches, which one would you buy, and which one is the better deal? Leave a comment below with your thoughts and experiences with them, and as people are researching torque wrenches, your comment might really help them out. If you like this video, please click like. If you like my channel, please click subscribe. And thanks for watching.